Hi, uh, my name is Carrie. I am an SRE on the Noble 9 team. Today, we're going to talk about some basic theory behind SLOs. But before we dive in, let's just quickly make sure we're all on the same page about some of these acronyms. So at the top level here, we've got SRE, right? Site Reliability Engineer. I'm sure many of you watching this are SREs yourselves. But uh, in general, we usually say this role is concerned with the reliability of your product. But I think one of the biggest responsibilities of an SRE that doesn't get talked about as much is how we bridge the gap between different groups within the company. Um, that could be like decisions that leadership makes that affect our developers. And SLOs or service level objectives is a tool that we use to start those conversations. So there's really a whole slew of responsibilities within this role, but let's just talk about one specifically related to SLOs, and that's going to be observability. So to simplify it, when we talk about observability, we're really referring to our ability to understand the internal state of a system by its external outputs. So that could include things like system stats or availability of a service or its dependencies or maybe just a count of errors. Um, and as an SRE, our goal is to implement and monitor those measurements so that we can have more effective conversations about the state of our product and where we should be putting in our efforts. So one good question that this helps answer is, are we in a good place where we can release new features without negatively impacting our customer experience? And that's where our SLOs come in. An SLO is really just a goal we set using the data we get from our telemetry. So this helps us gauge how well our product is doing and would help us point out things like trends, like maybe there's consistent downtime when code changes are implemented, or we'll just be able to forecast the availability of our service a bit better. Um, and to help us calculate these SLOs, we're gonna use what's called an SLI uh, or a service level indicator as you saw from the first slide. So these are gonna be the actual numbers or queries that we pull from our monitoring stack to help us measure our SLOs. And we're just gonna apply a little bit of math to them and that's gonna tell us how well we're meeting our goals. So the best part about an SLO is they can be as generic or as specific as you like, as long as you're recording the data to measure it. And SLOs are really only for internal purposes, so you shouldn't be afraid to change them all the time. These are totally separate from service level agreements or SLAs, which we won't really talk about here, but that's the one that would be customer facing and could have monetary repercussions if not met. So SLO, it's really just an internal indicator and they're gonna help you have better conversations about the direction of your product. So for example, if your data is telling you that 99.99% .99 availability is just unrealistic, Maybe you haven't been meeting that for months. Uh, change it. Uh, goals work best when you do them in small digestible chunks, and this shouldn't be any different. So if you set really lofty goals for yourself right away, it's not going to give you any meaningful data. So let's dive into an example. Um, you might set your SLO to say 99.95% of requests on a service will be completed in under 2,000 milliseconds. So that's maybe from the moment a customer types in your website and expects your website to load. Um, in this case, our SLI would be a query that's going to help us calculate the latency of that specific type of request. So once we have our SLO set as our goal, we're going to need a time frame to measure that against. So your time frame could be a day, a month, a quarter, a year, rolling window, whatever is going to suit you best. But this time frame is really going to help you calculate your availability level on a more digestible form. Um, something like seconds or minutes, um, just something easier to understand than a percentage. So let's go back to our example again for a minute. Uh, we're just going to add two words here. 99.95% of requests on a service are going to be completed in under 2,000 milliseconds every month. So if we're shooting for our availability level to be 99.95%, that means that we can have a maximum of 21.9 minutes of downtime per month um, before we dip below that percentage goal. So let's take a look at how we calculated this. Uh, if we want our availability to be 99.95% uh, per month, that means that we could be down for 0.05%. Um, and we got this number by subtracting one from our percentage in decimal form. So one minus 0.9995, which is 0 0.0005 or 0.05%. Um, this number is referred to as our error budget. And so now all we have to do is figure out how much time in minutes 0.05% of a month is, which is gonna be some very basic math. So on average, there are 30.42 days in a month, 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour. So we're just gonna multiply all of these together. 
And that's going to give us our value. And since the smallest denomination we used here was in minutes, that means our value 21.9 is going to be given to us in minutes of downtime per month. So if you wanted to calculate that in seconds, you would just multiply it by another 60 for 60 seconds in a minute. So this is going to be a really helpful way to see how much we're impacting our customer experience. The error budget is basically treated as an amount of error that your service can accumulate over a period of time before customers start to notice and complain. Um, so, you know, if you've been shipping a lot of new features to your product and it's had a lot of downtime from it, that might be a good indicator that you should focus on the reliability or maybe fix some existing features. Because uh, there's a pretty fine line between your service being available and your service having new features. Customers are always going to want both sides of that coin. Um, and if you can consistently ship new features without bugs frequently, your customers are going to be pretty happy. But if not, it's a good idea to start looking at the underlying causes of those issues. Like, is there maybe a service that you can make more stable to help ship new features without major restarts? Or maybe there's something in your sprint planning, like maybe it's a good indicator that you need to invest more time in QA before you ship something. Um, and that one in particular is one that might require some buy-in from leadership. So you could see how SLOs would be a great tool when talking to leadership because they're really good at helping translate important parts of your observability into impactful and easier to digest conversations. And I think that's its most important benefit, honestly. Um, when we talk to leadership, though, sometimes we're going to have to fight to explain why 100% availability is just unrealistic because uh, 100% sounds like what we want, right? But it's really only going to hurt yourself. Uh, giving yourself a buffer for downtime is going to do a lot of things for you. It's going to help your engineers be happier. Uh, it's going to give them a chance to have a better work-life balance. You know, they're not going to have to be glued to their phones or their machines. And your customers, who honestly know enough about computers to know that sometimes they just don't work, um, they're probably not going to notice if you have a cumulative 20 minutes of downtime per month. Um, and Honestly, if you really are hitting 100%, that's just going to give you room for chaos engineering. Um, and that's when you purposefully break your system so that you can learn how to fix them. And that's going to do you wonders. It's going to help your engineers prepare for a lot of different scenarios where something might actually go wrong, but you're going to do it in a controlled environment without the stress. And that's going to go a long way. So we've introduced a few concepts to you here. Uh, I really recommend if you want to dive more fully into SLOs, like how to choose a good one or how to calculate some more complex ones and, you know, more ways to talk to leadership and get other teams to buy in. This book, Implementing Service Level Objectives, is going to be your go-to for you. Uh, it's a super approachable read. Uh, it's got one heavy math chapter in it. I would really recommend just skipping that chapter the first time through if it's intimidating. But this book is really going to give you everything you need to get started. And not to mention, there's some really great talks at SLO Conf uh, today as well. So hopefully those help too. I'm going to leave this recap slide up here for a minute. It's got my Twitter handle at the bottom, The Mighty Muppet. If anyone has any questions at all, please feel free to at me. Um, yeah, thanks for listening in, everyone. <laughs>